All right, take your Bibles. We're going to take and uh, we're studying the differences between the rapture and the second coming. Then if we wrap, we'll probably wrap this lesson up this morning. And then we'll start um, doctrinal differences, which to me is one of the strongest proofs of the pre-trib rapture. Now the thing is, is these guys that teach that mid-trib rapture, post-trib rapture, they have verses to go with it. Now they're misapplied, but they have verses to go with their teaching. And showing the doctrinal difference between the church age and the tribulation and showing that the church age has to be left before the church age, the tribulation starts, to me is one of the strongest proofs of a pre-trib rapture. When me and Brother Bemis decided to, to debate them guys, we kind of swapped notes and we both came up with the strongest proof of a pre-trib rapture is the fact that a church age saint has eternal security and a tribulation saint does not. Which means that a church age saint cannot be in the tribulation for the doctrine to be sound. You have something that changes there. That's uh, in the, that lesson. So let's uh, start with uh, that we took and looked at uh, the tribulation the second coming last week. Now I want to look at, so that was Lord's coming to land on this earth. Now I want to look at the rapture of the church, the leaving. How with the rapture, somebody leaves this earth to go to a different location. Okay? So that's why I say that the main point of this lesson is you need to know if you're coming or going. <laughs> okay, at the rapture you're going, second coming you're coming. Back. Alright. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I pray that you'll take and uh, be with the lesson. I pray that you'll give me clarity of mind as I teach it. I pray that you'll show people the, how the, this doctrine is important and how it clears up and makes your word more clear and it all kind of fits together you can't just take one passage and ignore the other or just pick what which one that you think applies to yourself but you have to look at everything as a whole and i pray that your people will study the, the word i pray that they'll get grounded in the word and that they'll understand that this isn't just something that we believe it's something that the scripture teaches in jesus name i pray amen all right, um, the pre-trib rapture, as far as the church. Now let's look at some references for the church leaving the earth. Take your Bible and turn to John chapter 10. John chapter 10 and pick up verse 1. John chapter 10, verse 1. Now how many of you were here last week? Raise your hand is there anybody here that wasn't here last week? Okay, everybody was here last week. So, so you know where we're starting off here. John chapter 10, verse 1. says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name. Now look, underline it, and what? Leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they, will, they know not the voice of a stranger. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. And basically, Jesus Christ is the door. The porter would be the way to heaven. And he's the only way. But the sheep are those that believe in him. He's the good shepherd. And he does what? 
Now the key verse for the pre-trip rapture is, He leadeth them out. He takes them out. They follow Him. All right, take your butt. Now connect this with 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Look at verse 15. All right, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15. It says, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now it says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, where? In the clouds. To meet the Lord, where? In the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So, uh, we're going to go to meet the Lord in the air to be with Him. And who is this? Now, this is the important part that you really want to get. It says, for the dead, in, in verse 16, it says, the trump of God and the dead, what? In Christ shall rise first. You say, why is that important? Why is the in Christ important? How many of you know why that in Christ is important? Because only a church age saint is in Christ. They're part of the bride. You're in Christ. The phrase in Christ shows up um, a number of times through the scripture. And it has to do, it's all in the Pauline epistles. And there's a couple of times, I think, in First and Second Peter where it shows up. And then you have a similar, one other verse that's not quite in Christ. It's in Christ Jesus our Lord. But it's in Jude chapter 1. And look at Jude chapter 1. It kind of backs up this thought, okay, that somebody that's in Christ is somebody that has eternal security that the Lord is in them and they're in the Lord. Okay? Look at Jude chapter 1 verse 1. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved, what? In Jesus Christ and called. Okay? So you're preserved in Christ, in Jesus Christ. That is a reference to your eternal security in Christ. Now, what happens doctrinally is when you get saved, Jesus Christ comes to live inside of you, and you live inside of Him. And you're one with Christ, and you're seated together with Him in heavenly places. Amen? Say, how can I be here but be in heaven at the same time? Because your soul has become one with Christ. He's sealed your soul. He's separated it from your body. You're still in the body of the sins of this flesh. And that's corrupted. And the wages of sin still sits on this flesh. But that's why we're supposed to reckon this flesh to be dead. Indeed, unto sin. And we're waiting for the redemption of our body. So the body's not saved yet. The soul is what's saved. And that's what's sealed. So you have this um, thought of you being in Christ. Now... For you to be in Christ, that makes you part of the church, or the body of Christ, or the bride of Christ. Okay? You're in those, those three things are all basically the same thing. And that's why we call this time period the church age. It's the age between the cross and the rapture. Now this is a Gentile bride mostly. Um, there's, there will be some Jews in it. But during the time of the church age, there's neither Jew nor Gentile. It's just the church of God. Okay? Now, being a Jew, there's no prophet because that Jew is set aside. Temporarily set aside. And, and the church comes in. For a Jew to be saved, he has to be saved just like the Gentiles. Acts chapter 15. We are saved even as they. Okay? 
So I know I'm giving you a lot of material. I'm assuming that you've read your Bible and you're following along what I'm saying. If you're lost, you need to spend a few years reading your Bible through several times and get familiar with these passages. It's one thing that's difficult to teach people that don't read their Bible. Because they ain't got a clue what you're talking about when you jump back and forth like this. I can't go to every one of these passages to get this point across. I'm assuming you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, some Bible reading's necessary. And, uh, and it's necessary so you won't be fooled. I mean, uh, my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Okay? Doctrine helps you be established where you won't be deceived. It helps. Now, uh, you have in Christ. Now, I want you to take your Bible and turn to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. This is important. You have to understand the type that you're part of the bride of Christ. And you are likened to a Gentile bride that the Lord will lead out of here. Because when I get to uh, Song of Solomon, I want you to see that you're likened to a bride. Ephesians chapter 5, pick up verse 25. Ephesians 5, 25. It says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved what? The church, and gave himself for it, that he may sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Uh, Paul says that he presents us a chaste virgin to the Lord. I present you as a chaste virgin that you know which one I'm talking about am I getting them mixed up here how, how does how is it quoted brother there you go that's the one that I was talking about all right so uh, you're likened to a bride being presented to Christ okay now let's continue reading here in Ephesians chapter 5. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husband in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself uh, for it, that he may sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, they might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife, loveth himself. So if you're the wife of Christ, you're his own body. Okay? We're the body of Christ. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth it and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of what? His body. So you have all three things here. You have his body, the church, and the bride, right here. All of them. Of his flesh and his bones. For this cause shall man leave his father and mother, shall be joined unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. So the church, the bride, and the body are all referring to the Christians that are saved in the church age. Now, it may have a little bit different application on each one of those things. It's, it's kind of like the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all are what? God the Father. I mean God. But each one has a little bit different of a role that it plays. Okay, but they're all one. The bride, the church, and the body of Christ are all one. They're a glorious virgin that's presented to Christ as a bride. It's the church age. Okay, and it's, it's the body of believers in this day and age. Now, take your Bible and turn to, oh, I got it in my notes, 2 Corinthians 11, 2. For I am jealous over your, 
It's godly jealousy, for I espouse you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin in Christ. Take a Bible and turn to Song of Solomon chapter 2 now. Song of Solomon chapter 2. Now, how many of you have read the book of Song of Solomon? All right, the book of Song of Solomon is Solomon talking about the daughter of Pharaoh, which was his wife. Now, his wife was a Gentile bride, and she was black, okay? That's why it says, I'm black but comely in Song of Solomon. It is a picture of a Gentile bride and Jesus Christ. That's what the book's a picture of in typology, all right? Now, look at what it says in Song of Solomon chapter 2, and look at verse 9. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 9. My beloved is like a roe or a young heart. Behold, he standeth behind our wall. He looketh forth at the windows, showing himself through the lattice. Picture of him coming in the clouds and looking through the clouds. Okay? My beloved spake and said unto me, Rise up, my love, my fair one. And what? Come away. Come away. He calls her out. He calls her away. And the rapture is when the Lord comes back for his bride. He looks down through her eyes and says, Rise up, my love. Come away. A great type of that is John. So you have the three, in Revelation, the book of Revelation, you have the three churches addressed. Now, who is John? John is the disciple whom Jesus loved, right? He's the disciple whom Jesus loved. Now take your Bible and turn to um, Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. Now, I teach this as a type because to teach it as doctrine of the rapture is a little bit, you can't really do that because the church is of the first three chapters are all actually groups in the tribulation. So this is a type of the rapture. John's a type of the church and this is a type of the pre-trib rapture. So the churches are addressed, the seven churches, then um, in John chapter uh, 4, uh, I mean in uh, John chapter, Revelation chapter 4, Revelation chapter 4 and verse 1, look what you have. After this I looked and behold, a door was open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of what? A trumpet. Take talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show you which must be here, what? After. And then you have the events of the tribulation starting in Revelation chapter 5. Okay? So what do you have? You have John being called up through a door, through the window. And he says, come up hither. You know what I think will happen at the pre-trib rapture? I think the Lord's going to come back. Then clouds will be spread. The dead in Christ will rise first. Then I'll hear a trumpet. And there'll be a voice. And that voice will say, Samuel Witter, come up hither. Then out I'll go and follow the Lord. Part of the bride of Christ. But where do we go? We go to heaven. We go to heaven. Now, now let me show you two different groups. Two different contradictory groups. You got to know if you're coming or going. Now Luke chapter 12. Now this, uh, now neither one of them do I teach to be part of the bride, but one of them gets called up to be partake in the wedding. And we're going to look at that a little bit more with some the wedding party when I do the types of the wedding party. Okay, now let's go to Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. 
and look at verse um, Luke chapter 12. Look at per- verse 36. Luke 12, 36. Well, let's pick up verse 35. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning, and you yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord, when he will return, what? From the wedding. wedding. So here's somebody that returns from the wedding. Okay. Well, if he's returning from the wedding, that means part of the wedding's already happened. You can't have a wedding without a bride. Look at Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. This is just to show you that there's more than one part of this wedding and there's more individuals. There's groups. There's different groups. Okay? Matthew chapter 25. And look at what it says about the virgins. Now neither one of these passages do I apply to the church age or the bride. Okay? Neither one. But look how they're different, two different groups. Okay? Verse 10. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. One group is waiting for him to come back from the wedding. One group actually goes with him into the wedding. How do you explain the two passages? Well, they've got to be two different groups. It's got to be two different groups. You can't make them the same. So if it's not the same, you've got to realize you're dealing with a different group. Okay? Now, in Psalms, the marriage is described and there's several groups. You have the queen. You have the daughters of Tyrus. You have the queen's daughters, which are virgins. And then you have the bride and you have the groom. These are all different groups that will participate. Then also you have in the wedding the types of the way the old-fashioned Jewish wedding is laid out. Now I don't want to take and teach on the types of the trib, but when I do, I'm going to go through that old-fashioned wedding and show you the different parts of the wedding and show you how there can be a marriage supper in heaven and one on earth and there will be the marriage ceremony is in heaven. You have different sections of this Jewish wedding. But how the bride has to be taken out first, he comes and he steals the bride away. And that's the beginning of the marriage ceremony with the Jewish wedding. Yes? Who are the friends of the bride then? You didn't mention that. The friends of the bride. Friends of the bride, I make it the... Uh, well, John the Baptist said he was a friend of the bridegroom. Okay? The friends of the bride, I believe, is Gentile saved in the tribulation. I believe that's who it's going to be. The friends of the bride. But, uh, see, what, what a uh, Baptist writer will say is it's somebody that's saved in the church age, but that's not part of the local church of the Baptist writer's group. That's a false doctrine. Okay. That's taking it the wrong way. So what they, they try to do is make two different groups of saved people in the church age, ones that's part of the bride and those that are friends of the bride. We would, this church would actually be considered friends of the bride by real Baptist briders. We wouldn't be considered part of the bride of Christ because you have to be baptized into the bride of Christ according to them by water baptism from somebody that was a descendant through water baptism of true Baptist preachers. That's Baptist bride doctrine. You have to be kind of crazy to be able to follow. <laughs> I mean, that's uh, to follow their way of thinking. But uh, that's kind of their way of thinking there. Now that I don't agree with that. Anybody that's saved in this time period is part of the bride of Christ. Anybody that's saved. But you can see how somebody has to leave to go to heaven. 
all right? Now, when I teach that wedding, the, the last one, the types, I want trying to bring all these lessons together and show you it, all right? But now let's look at some doctrinal differences between the church age and the tribulation and how the pre-trib rapture explains that doctrinal difference where there's not a problem. And if you don't have a pre-trib rapture, you have problems that you have to solve that's very difficult to solve. Okay? And what a lot of guys will do when they go to solve them problems is they'll spiritualize passages, change passages, or say it doesn't really mean what it says. Okay? They try to get around them somehow instead of actually accepting them for what they say. Now, here's... Some do- there's uh, two main doctrinal differences that I want to give you. I want to give you um, the difference between the church and Israel, and how you do not have, you cannot have the church as saved believers here on earth the same time that you have Israel as a set-apart, sanctified people that God's going to use. The Israel has to be set aside during the time of the church. And then when God brings Israel back to deal with them, the church has to be gone. Now take your Bible. and Now there's two passages we need to get a little bit of understanding with first. One is in Galatians chapter 3 and the other is Romans chapter 11. So take your Bible and turn to Galatians chapter 3 and look at um, verse 26. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3 and pick up verse 26. Galatians 3, 26. For we are all the children of God by faith. Now here's the phrase. In Christ Jesus. Okay, for as many of you has, that has been baptized into Christ, spiritual baptism, have put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, obviously a spiritualized passage, because there is male and female in this building right now. Okay, and there is a difference between the two. I don't care what the left says. There's a difference. Okay, male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. So it has to be taken in its context in Christ. There is none of these things. There's not Jew, there's not Gentile, there's not male or female in Christ. You're all one in the body of Christ. So it does not matter if you came of a Jewish stock from the seed of Abraham in Christ. There's no difference. Okay? Now do you understand that? Is that clear enough? In Christ, there's no difference. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Alright? You're adopted. And to Abraham's seed, you're given those benefits, but not like the physical seed. This is a spiritual application of the church. What you do not want to do is steal the promises as given to the Jews. Now, every one of these guys that's going to teach that you're going to go through the tribulation, you know what they'll say? They'll say that we're spiritual Israel. And they'll do away with Israel completely. They don't bring Israel back as a nation, as a people. Most of them don't. Most every one of these guys do not understand that God will deal with Israel as a nation again. They they say that when that what they say is when uh, Israel was set aside, they were consumed into the church. Basically, I'm paraphrasing it. They're consumed into the church, and now the church is Israel. That's what they do. Now, that's not what the Bible teaches. Go back to Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. I, 
Now let's pick up verse 1 and go through this chapter. I say then, have God cast away his people, his people being the nation of Israel. God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, physical seed, of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Want ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets, and dig down thy altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to me seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Now he's going to give a spiritual application. There was some in Israel that were true followers of Christ. And he reserved a certain amount of them left. Even so then, at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then is it no more of works, otherwise grace is no more grace, but it be of works, then it is no more grace, otherwise work is no more work. Pretty cut and clear. What then, Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. So there's a certain amount of Israel that received Jesus Christ as their Savior. They go into the church age and receive everlasting life. Okay. According as is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see. Now these are the ones that did not receive Jesus Christ. Should not see in years that they should not hear unto this day. They're blinded. Okay. And David saith, Let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back always. I say then, having they, having they stumbled that they should fall, God forbid, rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles to provoke them to jealousy. In other words, because of them being blinded and rejecting the Messiah, salvation came to the Gentiles. Thank God for some hard-headed Jews that wouldn't receive Jesus Christ because I got in. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I mean, now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their physical Jews' fullness their restoration. For I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Now Paul's saying, hey, let me tell you something. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them, for if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but light from the dead? A resurrection. Ezekiel chapter 37. For if the first fruits be holy, the lump also holy, and if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them, and with them partakers of the root and fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches. In other words, don't get puffed up that the Jews were cast aside. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest by faith, be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spare not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. In other words, there's going to come a time when God's done with the Gentiles. It's going to be at the end of the church age. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell, severity, but toward thee goodness. If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. In our words, just as Israel is cut off, we're going to be cut off. And then God's going to start dealing with the, Gentile, the Jews again. Okay? 
For if thou wert uh, 25, for I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in part, in your part, your own, no, should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the, what, fullness of the Gentiles become in. So now everyone by this saved, that's going to be part of the bride, is finished. And so all Israel shall be saved, as written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from, oh, the Gentile bride? Jacob. No, from Jacob, Israel, physical. For this is my covenant unto them, not you, them. When I shall take away their sins, okay, as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. So these are lost Jews. They're enemies as far as the gospel's sake. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. There's going to come a time when the Lord's going to restore them, start dealing with that Jew again. And when he does, the fullness of the Gentiles is over. We're gone. So you have to make a separation between the two. Now, uh, next week I'm going to finish the doctrinal thing that I'm showing you. I'm going to show you that the tribulation time period is when God starts dealing with the Jew again. It's a time of Jacob's trouble. It is a time appointed. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people, Daniel's people, the Jewish people. It's not for the Gentiles. It's for the Jews. Now there are certain Gentiles that will get saved in that time period, just like there was some that got saved in the Old Testament under the Jewish kingdom. And some that got saved when he was sent forth only to the house of Israel. You still had the Syrophoenician woman that made herself a dog. And the Lord said, great is thy faith, even though he was sent only to the house of Israel. But there's a separation of the two, doctrine. In the church age, there is not. So uh, we're going to look at those verses next week, how the tribulation is a time period meant to deal with the Jews again. And you cannot have the church of age where there's neither Jew nor Gentile because there's different groups in the tribulation. Right now there's not different groups. In the tribulation, there is. So uh, that's why I want to show you it solves that doctrinal difference. It solves that when you have a pre-trib rapture because they go out, and it doesn't matter if there's differences here because the church is gone. All right, let's take a break there.